It's official. Apple released the public beta version of iOS 15, and we got it right here. There is so many small and significant improvements, and I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed so far. And here are some of my favorites. Let's take a look. This is a little insane. One of the first things you'll notice with iOS 15 is there is a new welcome screen. It has a nice little animated handwriting style font, just saying hello in a bunch of different languages. Another neat addition is anytime you have your cursor like on a keyboard, you can tap and there's a new thing called text from camera. And then it opens up the camera and then any text it can capture, let's see if I can do this here. I can hit insert and it adds to my note or my document. And let's move on to Memoji. And there's a few new things here. The first of which are new stickers. Also, there is a bunch of new accessories uh, for clothes, headwear, and you can customize things like making your eyes a different color. One of the other nice additions for Memoji is the ability to get not one, but two, but sometimes three color customizations for different headwear and clothing. Uh, my outfit's not the most matched outfit, so. One of the things iOS 15 does is bring back the text selection magnifier. So if I have my keyboard up and I'm typing, I can press and hold on uh, a text or word and it brings up a magnifier and allows me to put my cursor right where I want it. What's up? One of the biggest overhauls came in the form of FaceTime. As soon as you open it, you can already see some differences. There's a different history list, on the top left, there is now a create link, which we'll talk about in a moment. All right, so we're gonna call Luke Cage. Okay, so let's take a look at a few things. And we're gonna start actually with a thumbnail image on the bottom. Uh, if I tap it, it gets larger. I can flip to the rear camera, and a neat addition to that is I have the ability to zoom. There is a zoom button on the bottom, so I can jump between different cameras here. I can also just pinch to zoom like that. But probably one of the coolest additions is on the top left side, and that is the portrait mode button. So if I tap it, it will blur out my background. Now, I don't have much of a background, but there is that couch. So if you look on the, the bottom right, it's blurred. And if I tap it again, it's unblurred. So portrait mode on and off. So here's on, blurred and off. And that's pretty easy, right? For those watching, <laughs> this is a little insane, but I, I think you get the idea. So now, let's just say that I want to share something. So I'm gonna share um, an Apple TV show. If you look at the top of the screen, it says, we'll share play automatically. So I'm gonna start playing this. You can see it's just automatically popping up on this screen here. And I can control it from um, the phone that I'm on right now. It stops both of them at the same time. You could also share your screen with anyone on the call. So if I tap on my phone here, I can tap on this icon here, the share icon. It says share my screen. And then you can see a countdown. And on the other collar here, I can hit open. And now anything on the left phone, I see on the right phone. So let's get out of the call here. And as I'm moving through here, wherever I go, you can see that. So let's open up like the weather app here. It opens up there. And it's pretty responsive. I mean, these are right next to each other, um, but they're connected over FaceTime. Also something else about SharePlay you should know, is both people have to have the SharePlay app. So if you didn't have Apple TV and weren't subscribed, um, you wouldn't be able to watch it over a FaceTime call. It would just show up like a, like, a, like a blank screen or be quiet. So FaceTime is probably the feature that was most hyped when iOS was first announced, and that's largely because of the A word, Android. I wanna be careful because I, I don't want people to get upset, but there is not FaceTime on Android. There's not a, a FaceTime app on Android. You cannot call and start a FaceTime call on an Android phone. 
But what you can do is there are these really cool links that people with an iPhone can create and share with people. And if you're on an Android phone or Windows computer, you can call in with those links and participate in a call. Sadly, you don't get Memoji. A feature I'm so excited to see finally on the iPhone is the ability to drag and drop. So I could select multiple things from one app and drag them into another app. How cool is that? Let's show this off with photos. So I'm gonna open up the photos app. I'm gonna select a few photos here. I'm gonna start with one and I'm just gonna pull this down. And then when I tap on other photos, it just kind of adds them to that pile there. Here we go, we'll add this one as well. And now I can go and swipe with the other hand. I'm on the home screen. You can see those five photos are stuck to my, my right finger here. And I'm gonna open up email. Let's do a new message. And if I let go, all those photos are gonna be in that message. How cool is that? All right, so another neat addition to iOS 15 is the ability when you have a game controller connected to your iPhone, um, you can tap on the share button on the controller and it'll start a screen recording. So I'm gonna tap the share button here, allow screen recording in Cat Quest 2, and hit record screen. And now it's recording my screen. So I can do some gameplay here. It's kind of awkward way to play. All right, iOS 15 also brings updates to the photo app. I'm gonna open this up. And one of the first things you're gonna notice if you tap on a photo, and when you swipe up on the photo, you get all the data related to that photo, the X, e -X -I -F data. And what's nice is it tells you the camera, or in this case, the phone, what lens you were using, the megapixels, the resolution, the ISO, all those details there, um, and, and where it's taken. Another neat thing in photos is this ability to do a thing called lookup. So here I have a, a photo of flowers, and again, there's a little plus indicator on that icon. If I tap on it or just swipe up here, I'll tap on it. And on the bottom right, it's given me a leaf now. So if I tap on this, it's going to show me some Siri knowledge, and it's gonna, Siri knowledge shows that uh, what kind of flower it is, but also I can see similar web images. So for lookup, you can get different categories, like flowers, pets, and, and stuff like that, but you can also get, um, look up other images that are that are similar to what you're looking at. Something else you're gonna see across the system on iOS 15 is what's called live text. So now I'm gonna open up my Photos app, and here is a photo that has text in the photo. And if I wanna select it, let's say I just wanna select the password, I'm just gonna push and hold on that. And then I can copy that. And then let's see if I can paste it here so you can see. There you go. So here I am, I'm wearing a t-shirt and uh, it says Tom Waits on the shirt, it's wrinkled. Again, if I just push and hold on that, I can select it. If it was a different language, I could hit translate. The other thing is when you see the little live text icon, if you tap it, it's going to highlight the text or what it can interact with in that photo. So again, we have a screenshot here. If I tap that, you can see it's, it picks up all the text but if I uh, tap and hold on the web link, it just opens it up. You don't have to copy or paste it. Isn't that cool? And live text also works in the camera viewfinder. So um, if there is something with text in the viewfinder, for example, this matchbook, you can see the little live text icon pops up on the bottom right. There you go, I'm gonna tap on that. And then it can select um, the text off the matchbook. Look how small that is. Isn't that crazy? All right, let's talk about the biggest change to notifications. And that's gonna be a thing called notification summary. And what this does is it basically weeds out any notifications that aren't personal, that aren't from someone you know, or that are not time sensitive. And it, it just groups all of those notifications together for you to read um, when you want to. So. If you look at the top of this settings page, you can see it says scheduled summary. So if I tap on this, I'm gonna turn this on. So you have a lot of control over what's in it as well as when you choose to receive the delivery. So let's take a look and set this up. 
So saying the first summary is gonna be delivered at 8 a.m. Let's do it for right now. I can schedule a second summary and leave that six or even another one. And I hit to turn notification summary on. So here is my afternoon summary, two apps, seven notifications. That's seven times I would have been interrupted or, or, or my attention drawn away from something I'm doing. So, all right, let's talk about messages, which gets a few updates. Uh, right off the bat, you could see the way it handles photos is different. So it makes these little mini photo collages. So here we have three photos that I sent to someone and it linked them all together in this really cool collage. And if you're sending lots of photos to someone at once, it's gonna put them in an image stack. And what I love about this is you could just swipe through with your fingers on that. You could also tap the little icon above it to go to a grid view. And the, another cool thing, so let's just say I'm gonna put a, a tap back response on this. Let's put a little thumb up on this one. And let's say that we really love this one, this photo here. Take a look at this animation now. As I'm swiping through the cards in the image stack, the tap back sticks to that particular photo. All right, and there's one more message feature I wanna talk about, and that actually relates to a wider system feature called Shared With You. So for example, if someone has shared with me links or music or news stories or photos, there are now going to be apps that can figure out that uh, someone shared with me a news link and display that in the Apple News app. So for example, I could, can just look at them here, but if I want, I can go into the Apple News app, scroll on down, you see there's a section called Shared With You. So these are the same stories and the same links that were in that message here, the same ones. And it also applies to apps like music. If I scroll down here, you can see uh, I have a, couple, a few albums that were shared with me as well in that conversation. All right, let's take a look at some changes in Safari and my absolute favorite thing about Safari is the fact that the tab bar is now at the bottom. So that means if you're one hand holding a phone, you're gonna have no problem like uh, reaching this with your thumb um, and typing in an address or a search term, right? Cause you could do that. So first of all, notice how the tab bar uh, dissolves away. Uh, so if I pull this down, it's there. And after a few moments, it's going to just kind of melt into the bottom there as I start scrolling. Watch, see that? The other thing is, take a look to the left side there. Um, you can kind of see, it just shows you like the back end of a bubble, like there's something there. So if I actually swipe left to right um, on the tab bar, it allows me to swipe between tabs. I love this. So now I have a bunch of things um, in my tabs here. And notice when I'm in a quote unquote middle tab, I get that little indicator on the left and right. I just think this updated tab bar, I'm all about it. So if I wanna refresh a page, another neat feature on Safari is I can just pull down to refresh and it will reload that page. And it's so satisfying. All right, let's take a look at a really cool new feature in iOS 15 for the camera app, and that has to do with Quick Take. And if you forget what Quick Take is, what that allows you to do is if you push and hold down the shutter button, it starts recording a video. But what the new thing is, if I swipe up, it allows me to zoom in, and if I swipe down, it allows me to zoom out. That is pretty cool functionality. All right, let's talk about what I think is probably the most significant feature in iOS 15, and that is a thing called focus mode. So basically, if you're familiar with Do Not Disturb, it's kind of like Do Not Disturb has been plugged into an amplifier and is playing a stadium concert. It's got to get loud. So let's take a look at what focus does. Right off the bat, you can see it gives you four statuses to choose from. Do Not Disturb, personal, sleep, work. But if you want, you could also create your own status. So maybe you have something where um, like you're filming a video and you want people to know that, or perhaps you're working out, or maybe you're cooking dinner and you don't want to be disturbed that way. So what we're gonna do is let's set up um, a status. So I'm gonna set up a work status. 
So now it's saying allowed people for notifications. Um, this is where I might add in my boss, or um, for example, I'm making a video, I might add in my video editor. Luke Cage is the only person I can receive notifications from during this time. So I'm gonna allow that one person to do that. Now it's saying what apps am I going to allow to notify me? So I've selected some apps that are okay to notify me when my work status is active. I'm gonna hit allow five apps. Um, and now for time sensitive notifications. So um, perhaps maybe there is an emergency and my brother is trying to get a hold of me. This will allow that message to go through even if he's not on my allowed list. So I'm gonna hit allow time sensitive notifications. Um, and now my focus is ready. So I'm gonna hit done. And now I could select work and enable that. With it activated, you can see a couple things. One, it gives me that little icon on the top right, which is nice. Also, um, if someone tries to send me a message, let's see if I can get this in the shot here without messing things up. You can see um, it says Patrick has notifications silenced with focus. But if it was an emergency and I hit notify anyway, since I enabled that, it would allow it to go through. One more th quick thing I wanna show you with focus mode. Again, there's so much to this, but just like you don't wanna have maybe certain apps notify you, perhaps just seeing an app, you might be tempted, like maybe you're, you have Instagram and you're tempted to just check it because you have a quiet moment. Um, you can remove that temptation by customizing your home screen. All right, so I'm gonna go to my home screen and I can say custom pages. And I can choose what pages um, that are displayed. So here it shows me the thumbnails of all the pages of apps I have. So I'm gonna say, I just want this page of apps when this focus is on. So all these other pages will not show up. All right, so now let's take a look here. So he, clearly you could see I have all those pages of apps still. But now when I go to my focus, I can turn on my work focus. And if I cut back here, I only have that page of apps. I can go to my app library if I need, really need to. So I think this is brilliant. There's so much more to focus, but these are some of the things I am most excited about. So if you've made it this far, congratulations. Uh, but seriously, I wanna hear from you guys now. What do you think? so far of iOS 15. What's your favorite feature? Are there things you had hoped for on iOS 15 that you didn't get? Throw your thoughts in the comments.